friends today we shall consider the the great statement given by j krishna murthy he said truth is a pathless land this is a very profound statement no doubt but the interpreters of the j krishna murthy sayings they are very strange some of them say no path is needed krishna murthy said there is no path no approach is needed no system is needed no effort is needed no step is needed if we take literally when krishna murthy say that there is no path is a pathless but buddha said there is a path he has given the eight fold path lord krishna has also given talked about the path the path of devotion path of action path of wisdom rishi patanjali also has talk about the path he has given the stand yog yam niyam asan pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyan and samadhi so if we take literally the statement of j krishna murthy that truth is a pathless land then there is no path no system it means the great ones who has talked about the path were they foolish no whatever krishna murthy says is is also 100% true because whatever he is talking he is talking from his the depth of his own being from his own experience and what buddha said what lord krishna said or rishi patanjali said they are also true so we have to reconcile these statements if you are reject the statement of buddha and accept krishna murthy if some other person will come we will accept him and will reject krishna murthy this is will be a wrong approach we have to reconcile this statement now how will we reconcile it you see whatever buddha lord krishna rishi patanjali and the great ones whether is a master kutmi or master m they have talked they have given message through madam levitsky in secure doctrine and vice of silence etc etc so we have to understand that unfortunately the fault does not lie with the teachings of buddha or lord krishna but the interpreters they have made a false approach they have wrongly interpreted and misguiding the humanity now let us take the example j krishna murthy says that there is only one step which is to end the ego there is no such thing as separate self is a illusion so this is the only step rather even that step is not needed if you understand that there is no such thing as separate self the illusion is gone if the illusion is dropped then you are in that state of oneness in the, in the state of well established in the truth now let us consider what lord krishna said lord krishna has given path of devotion and what the essence of devotion the essence of devotion is complete surrender of the self to the universal self to the universal consciousness it means complete ending completely ending the ego when this when we really understand that there is no separate to self and that self is completely surrender or abolished or finished or ended say by way of devotion or anything same same teaching no difference now let us take the path of action path of action says the saturation point of the karma yoga or the path of action the essence of path of action is nishkam karma action without seeking any fruit means the action without any desire without any kamna so this is nishkam karma and 
how one can be in that state when there is no desire, when he is really egoless. I is absent, separate self is absent. So he is also talking about the dissolution of the ego, dissolution of the self. Now let us take the path of wisdom, path of path of knowledge, path of gyan, gyan mark. He has a gyan mark. In the path of wisdom, or you may call it Sankhya Yoga, what it says, it says that there should not be any feeling of doing doer. Akartapan ka bhav. The I is absent. So in the Gyan Yoga, in the path of wisdom also, it has been suggested that there is the ending of the ego, ending of the self ending of the separative self, come out of this illusion and you are in that state in which truth can be learned. This is one way of saying. Now let us take another example. Our masters, say the great ones, they have given, they have given the suggested path through Madame Levitsky. In the attitude of master, they say, the discrimination, the insight, the desirelessness, that is the balanced attitude, and then self cleanliness, or we may call it shat sampati or purification, and finally they talk of the love. Love is also a state of. So, in a way, you can say that these are the steps, or in, a, in another way, you can say they are not the steps, just you understand crystal clarity there, everything become clear and no step is needed, you are in that state. So every sentence says it, to my little understanding, I think that there is no contradiction at all, there is no contradiction at all. Now let us consider when Krishna ji says, truth is a pathless land, is it right? Because truth cannot be, truth cannot be realized at the physical plane at the mental plane or at the astral plane, through the physical, astral and mental body. But truth can be realized only when you go beyond the mind. And while going beyond the mind, at the institutional and spiritual level, there is no system, there is no self. When there is no self at that level, where the truth can be realized, so there, at that level there is no path, there is no system, there is no I. There is no action, there is no effort, there is no step, there is no comparison, there is no choice because self, the choice, the effort, the path is adopted by the self only and at that level when you reach beyond the mind, when the mind is become standard, is still and silent, then there is no self and when there is no self, there is no I, the pathless effortless, effortless floating and there alone the truth can be realized. So Krishna Murti, whatever he is telling is right, it is a pathless land. But before entering into that pathless land, before entering into that land which is pathless, where alone truth can be realized, one has to make some preparation. Straight away you cannot jump from physical to intuitive plane. You have, to make, you have to make your physical body fit, you have to lead an orderly life. If you are not living in an orderly life, and Krishnamurti rightly suggested that you cannot bring the order in your life. What you can do? You can just observe impartially, choicelessly the disorder in your life. When you observe the disorder, when you observe the vices, when you observe the anger, when you observe the violence, then you, it is dropped because you see the futility and you see the ugliness of these things. It is dropped. So to my little understanding, there is absolutely no difference in teachings what Krishnamurti said and what Buddha and Krishna and other great ones have said. It's only the interpretation, the fault of the interp interpreters or we sometimes we do not really understand it, so we have to take it in that positive way. Other point, 
I can say that to enter into that pathless land, this is the intuitive plane beyond the mind, one has to make the preparation. So the, for the preparation, some, some system, some path, some suggestions, some hearing, some making some choice. Let us take an example. If I have a choice either to hear Krishna Murti or to hear Bhagavad Basharam, I have to make a choice in the beginning. When I when it becomes so crystal clear to me that I have to hear or understand the Krishna Murti only, then it is a different thing. It is a very high state. But in the beginning, when I am a learner, when I am a, an apprentice, I have to make a choice in Krishna Murti and uh, Ram or Guru Ram Rahim or uh, Ram Palji, I have to make the choice. I have to judge also in the beginning. When I am learner, when I am an apprentice, I have to make the judgment also. I have to make some efforts also. Suppose Krishna Murti is giving a talk at Bombay and I am here. I have to go there. I have to make some effort. Without effort, how I can go and listen him? Of course, now the YouTubes and other social media is available. But at that time, when there was no such facility, one has to make the effort and go and sit at the feet of J. Krishnamurti. So in the beginning, while you are making a preparation, some effort is needed, some choice also is needed in the beginning, some discriminating faculties also needed, some efforts also needed, making some judgment also needed, some path, some, some, some system, some preparations also needed. Cleaning away, the cleaning process of our lower vehicles is also needed. But at that level, so long I am engaged in those activities, I cannot realize the truth. This is fact, this is right. I, to my little understanding, I understand this thing. But until unless I prepare myself, I live orderly life. I live a selfless and loving life. I am free from all contradictions. There is no conflict. There is crystal clarity. Then I can enter into that land which is pathless and there alone I can realize the truth. In that, when I reach there, when I, when one reach there, there is no I. And that one or that individual is effortlessly floating without any effort. At that level, there is no choice, there is no effort, there is no judgment. There is no path. So we have to make the difference between the adept and apprentice. We have to make difference between preparation and awakening. In awakening, there is no time. No time is involved. Spontaneous. Spontaneous understanding and spontaneous action. But while we are preparing ourselves, say, the process of purification, process of orderly living, this is a very long task. Any Tom, Dick and Hari cannot hear Krishna Murti and immediately understand the things and take the quantum jump and uh, lead an effortless life and enter into the pathless land where truth is realized. Very difficult things, not so easy. Many persons say, if you are considering theory only, then it is very simple. You can memorize certain things, you can take the statement of Krishna Murti and adopt it in your statements, it's okay, but when you are really living it, it's a very challenging job. So my humble submission is, please, for God's sake, don't reject the outgoing past masters or adepts like Buddha, Lord Krishna, Shankaracharya, Patanjali, but try to reconcile these statements. One more thing I will tell you. The evolutionary process is going on according to the divine plan of evolution. The teachings which were needed 2000 before, they were different. And now person has evolved to some level, he needs some higher teachings. So the teachings, higher and higher teachings will be given to the humanity. Now Krishnamurti, whatever Krishnamurti said, in future, say after 2000 or 4000 letters, Again, some other, some still higher teachings can be given. So we, we are in a ladder of evolutionary process. We should not reject anything or blindly accept anything, but we should consider all these points. Some of the points that I have put before you, please consider.
consider this and live the life accordingly whatever the great ones have suggested thank you very much let us sit in silence for a couple of minutes